Shalom and blessings to you. I'm Reverend Clifton McDowell Sr. I'm the pastor of the Church of God of East New York, located in the heart of Brooklyn, the East New York section of Brooklyn. We're so glad that you chose to tune in to our channel for this message. We believe that God has a word for you. We hope that you will subscribe to our channel and like us. Now let's go in and hear a great message. We've been going through an I Am series where it's been talking about, amen, um, the identity of Jesus Christ. Today we want to talk about the claim that he made, the, the declaration that he made in John chapter 10. John chapter 10, reading at verse 1, Jesus says, Verily, verily, he's talking to the Pharisees. Verily, Truly, I tell you, Pharisees, these were Jewish leaders. He says, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. You're a wrestler. <laughs> the, the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him. Why? Because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand. It's amazing um, what folks don't understand when they really don't want to understand. But the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Verily, truly, I tell you, watch my lips, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come, I have come, that they might have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. Ah, oh, look at him. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, the hireling, is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flocks and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I, Jesus says, am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. And my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, I, and I know the Father, he said, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them he was talking about you. Amen. They will listen to my voice. There shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life and only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my father. Jesus would tell parables, illustrate truths, in a way that fit his audience. And so because he was in the Middle East and they understood um, shepherding, they understood sheep, he told it like this. But what might it sound like if the Lord had been in the West? What might it have sounded like? What would he have talked about? Let, let me just, let me share it like this with you. Jesus said, all y'all Pharisees better listen up. A fella who goes over the fence and starts walking through the cows on foot must be a cattle rustler. 
But the one who rides through the gate on horseback is the cowboy. The, the cow boss tells him what gate to go through to get to the pasture. The cows are in and the cattle recognize the cowboy's voice. The cowboy knows each cow by name and, and leads them, amen, to all tall grass and clean water. When he gets them all out of the pasture, he doesn't have to push because they will follow. They won't follow a stranger. They, they get boogered down and run off. When someone is walking through them on foot, they only recognize a cowboy who sits tall in the saddle and takes care of them. Jesus told this story, but the Pharisees didn't understand what it meant. Jesus explained to them, listen up. I am the gate to the cattle. Any person who tries to get to the cattle in any way except through me are liars and cattle rustlers. The cattle, cattle will spook if they come near. I am the gate. Through me, everyone will be saved. I lead to tall grass and clean water. A cattle rustler only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that my cattle will have tall grass and clean water and have a bunch of it. <laughs> I am the good cowboy. The good cowboy will die for his cattle. The day worker is not the cowboy and does not own the cattle. If a day worker sees a wolf or a rustler. He's not going to defend the cattle with his life. No, he will hightail it out of there. Then the herd is run through the fence and they're scattered. The day worker isn't going to put his life on the line. But I, I am the good cowboy. I know my cattle and my cattle know me. Just like the Father knows me and I know the Father, I will lay down my life for ca my cattle. But this isn't the only herd I care for. I have given them, I have other herds that aren't in this pasture. I will gather them together. They will listen and follow me also. Eventually, there will be one herd taken care by one cowboy. My father loves me because I'm willing to give my, my life and take it back. No one can take my life from me, but it is my choice to give it. I have the authority to lay it down and to get it back. This is the job my father gave me to do. If Jesus had been in the West, it might have sounded something like that. But he was in the Middle East. And so, amen, they understood sheep and shepherd. And so this morning, I want to talk to you about the good shepherd. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. He refers to himself using the vernacular, I am. The only other person that ever used that kind of terminology to refer to themselves was Jehovah God. In Exodus 3.14, in response to Moses' question, when God says, I'm sending you to set my people free, he said, who shall I tell him has sent me? The Lord God spoke to him and told him, tell them, I am have sent you. I am, I am who I am. And so when Jesus declared, I am the good shepherd, Jesus was claiming to be almighty God. When Jesus, by declaring, I am the good shepherd, Jesus was claiming to be the Messiah. You all know Psalms 23, where the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. I lack nothing. 
He makes me lie down where? In green pastures. He leads me beside where? Quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. I wonder, does anybody here know that good shepherd this morning? Has he ever refreshed your soul? Has he ever led you to places that renewed you and restored you? Amen. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake, even though I walk through the darkest valley. Some of you right now may be going through a dark valley, may be going through a difficult time, but we have the assurance of the good shepherd, amen, that he'll walk with you through the dark valleys, amen. So David, the psalmist says, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, the good shepherd. My cup overflows, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Amen. Peter picked it up in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. He says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, do you know what I'm talking about? By his wounds, amen, you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your soul. Amen. How many of you will acknowledge that you were like a prodigal son or a prodigal daughter? How many of you will acknowledge right now there was a time in your life that you wandered away from the Lord? Amen. That you drifted away from the Lord. But the Lord was merciful. The Lord was gracious. And he came and he met and he watched out for you. I wanted to talk to you about the prodigal son, but I'm going to save that for another time. But how many of you know that the father was waiting for you? That the father stood waiting for you with outstretched arms? When others wanted to make you pay, he met you with grace and mercy. He's the shepherd and overseer of our soul. And then Jesus himself in Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 8, amen, chapter 9. As Jesus was going through the towns and villages teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness, he looked at the crowds and the Bible says when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. The good shepherd recognizes sheep that are harassed. He recognizes sheep that are going through life, amen, without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest. Ask the good shepherd, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. There are many people all around you in the places you live, work, and play who need to know the good shepherd. Amen. And the Lord is saying we need to be those workers who will lead people to the good shepherd. How many of you know that he's a good shepherd? Amen. How many are glad that you're in his sheepfold? How many are glad that you're one of his? Come on, say I'm one of his today. Amen. The songwriter, used to, the songwriter says, I used to hate them, but thank God I'm one of them today. I used to say they're just a noisy crew, but praise God I'm one of them today. Look at, used to look at them and laugh at them, but now I'm one of them. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God some glory and praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's the good shepherd by declaring I am the good shepherd. He was pointing a finger at the Pharisees. For they were the hirelings. They were the day workers of the story. The Jewish leaders that were spoken against, prophesied against in Ezekiel chapter 34. And when, when the Lord tells them, I am the good shepherd, and they, he begins to expound to them, they eventually got it. In Ezekiel 34, listen to what the word of God says. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to you shepherds of Israel, you leaders of Israel, you leaders of the nation who only take care of yourselves. 
Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curbs. Clothe yourself with the wool and slaughter the choice animals. But you do not take care of the flock. You, you have not strengthened the weak. Have not healed the sick or bound up the injured. You've not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food, prey for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered over all the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth and no one searched or looked for them. Therefore, you shepherds, and he's talking to the Pharisees. Amen. Any scribes around, this is for you. Any high priest, listen up. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, because my flock lacks a shepherd and so has been plundered, plundered, and has become food for all the wild animals and because my shepherds did not search for my flock but cared for themselves rather than for my flock. Therefore you shepherds hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against the shepherds and will hold them accountable for my flock. I will remove them from tending the flock so that shep those, the shepherds can no longer feed themselves. You want to you wanna live off of the, the, the flock. He says, I will rescue my flock from their mouths. And it will, no longer, they will, it will no longer be food for them. But this is what the sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. My God have mercy. He says, I'll look for them myself. He says, I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the country. This is what God is saying. And when he told them, I am the good shepherd, when he was pointing a finger at them and telling them, you're the hirelings, you're the shepherds that Ezekiel prophesied again. By declaring, I am the good shepherd, he was also telling these Jewish leaders that he was the shepherd that is spoken about that would rescue his flock from them. Picking it up, amen. Amen. In, in verse 11, let me go back and it says, for this is what the sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my shepherd and I will look after them as a shepherd looks after the scattered flock. When he is with them, he's the good shepherd. He says, so will I look after my sheep. Anybody know that the Lord's looking after you? Yeah. When you look back over your life and you, the songwriter says, when I look back over my life and I think things over, my good times have outweighed my bad times. Why? Because the Lord has been looking out for us. There are some times you don't even know that he's there. There are some times you don't know if you acknowledge him. But thanks be to God, he's right there. Amen, the midnight hour when nobody else is around, he's looking out for us. He says, I will look after my sheep. I will rescue them from the places where they were scattered on the day of clouds and darkness. He says, I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries. I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and on the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. They will lie down in good grazing land and they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down. And then what David says, you make me lie down in green pastures, declares the sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring them back, bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the slick Amen. Those slick folks that say, I don't need God. I got this all together. I'm my own boss. I go by my own rule. You go ahead and keep being slick. Be slick Willie and sw slick Jane. <laughs> he says, the slick 
and the strong in themselves, he says, I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. I want to tell somebody that Jesus is not just a good shepherd. He is the good shepherd. Are you hearing me? He's not, he's not a shepherd among many good shepherds. No, he's not a Messiah. He is the Messiah. He is unique. He is altogether unique. He stands alone. Nobody, a man, is like our God. Nobody is like our Jesus. And so I want to this, this today, I want to just quickly share five things about the Good Shepherd. First of all, the Good Shepherd is good. The Good Shepherd is good. You don't have to doubt it. You, you don't have to um, think about it. I want to tell you, he is good. I wish I had a witness in this room today. I wish somebody online was a witness, amen, that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. He's sinless. He's guileless. His very character is good. And he wants you and I to know his goodness. The Lord is good. The good shepherd is good. These last four things I want to tell you about them. The good shepherd wants to do something for you. The day laborers, the hirelings, the rustlers, they mean you no good. They talk a good talk. They, they, they're, you know, somebody said they're, they're, they're all hat. <laughs> but they, got, they can't deliver. The good shepherd wants to do something for you. And that's what I want to leave you with this morning. The good shepherd wants to protect you. He wants to protect you this morning. The rustler, the hireling, He or she wants to injure you, wants to place you in danger. But the good shepherd, he wants to protect you. The hireling wants to set you up for a fall, for disaster. But the good shepherd wants to protect you. And when we place ourselves under the care of Jesus, our life is safe with him. How many of you know that you're safe with Jesus? Anybody recognize that you're safe with Jesus? Let me tell you something. There are some folk you better not um, leave a man your family with. There are some you better not leave your girls with. They could even be relatives. Hello, house. But I want to tell somebody that you are safe with Jesus. No matter what you've been through, no matter the hurt, the pain, amen, that you've gone through, others may have taken advantage of you. But can you say safe? You're safe in the arms of Jesus. My brothers, my sisters, you're safe with Jesus. In Jesus' day, sheep were totally defenseless and totally dependent on the shepherd. Sheep were always in danger or possible danger. And so they always had to be under the watchful eye of the shepherd, even as they grazed, even as they drank water, because as they drink water, they can't see. They don't see nothing going on around them. You ever, you ever see somebody eating, and they are oblivious to everything that's going on in the room? Not y'all. Y'all not like that. But sheep don't know what's going on around them. A wolf could be standing right next to them, and he just... And so it required that a shepherd always have his watchful eye or her watchful eye on the sheep. I want to tell you something. You are never out of the eyesight of the Lord. You are never out of his sight. You're always under his watchful eye. Remember David, 
when David was watching his father's flock, he had to always be watching. Amen. He had to always be on his guard. Amen. He says, you know, amen, while I was guarding the sheep, one time a, a, a lion came up. And I had to take the lion out. Why? Because that's what shepherds do. He, he said, another time, he says, a bear came up and tried to take one of my father's sheep. I grabbed him. And I took him out. Why you do that, David? Because that's what shepherds do. He had to always be on his guard watching his father's sheep. Shepherds were frequently subjected to danger and sometimes gave their lives to protect the sheep. And that's what David was doing. David was putting his life on the line. I want to tell somebody that Jesus put his life on the line for you. I would tell somebody that the, the, the enemy came in like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But the Lord, amen, put his life on the line for you. The, the Lord knew that the enemy would try to take you out. But the Lord put his life on the line for you. And he did it in advance. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Why Jesus? Because I'm the good shepherd. Amen. I'm not a good shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. And that's what I do. He took our place and he bore our sins. And so I want to tell somebody this morning listening to my voice that the good shepherd wants to protect you. Secondly, the good shepherd, he wants to provide for you. Amen. How many of you found out that God is a good provider? Do I have a witness in the room that God is a good provider? The, 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 the hireling, the cattle rustler, all they want to do is deprive you and starve you and withhold what is good from you. But the good shepherd wants to provide for you. David says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He prepares a table before me. A flock on its own may survive in the wilderness, but a flock taken care of by a good shepherd is bound to live a more abundant life. God is always providing. Amen. Can I tell somebody that God is never not providing? Are you hearing me? Just like he's never not working. He is never not providing for me. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. And all that I have needed, your hands have provided. Oh, he's a good provider. The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him. He's always providing. He says, I will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He is a good provider. And the fact is, he's already provided. The songwriter says, everything I need, he's already provided. Just ask and believe. Just ask it in his name. He's already provided. Everything I need. See, there are some things that I think I need, but he's such a good provider. He recognizes when I'm asking for something that will be harmful for me and harmful, and it's not just about me. Come on with me. There are other people connected to me. That there are other people that I'm looking out for in my household, beyond my household, in this congregation. He's not going to just give me something, even if I ask for it, if it's going to be harmful. Why? Because he's the good shepherd. And the good shepherd protects. And the good shepherd provides. He provides what we need to grow in the faith. He provides what we need when we need it. Why? Because he's the good shepherd. So the good shepherd protects. The good shepherd provides. He wants to provide for you. He wants to protect you. But thirdly, 
The good shepherd wants to guide you. They tell me that in the West, some of the best guides were of African descent. When they wanted to hash out a trail, when they wanted to look for, for something, they would get a black guide. These African Americans, they were embraced by the Native Americans. They understood the languages of the Native Americans. They, they spoke, and when, when Native Americans looked at them, they did not put them in the same group as those who were oppressing them and stealing their land. In fact, I would go as far as to say that if General Armstrong Custer had some African people of African descent in his cavalry, they would have still been left alive. Because oftentimes, when the Native Americans would come and take out the military who was trying to steal their land and trying to genocide them, they would leave the black folk alone. They would say, no, they're not one of them. <laughs> They were good guides. I want to tell somebody, Jesus is a good guide. You know why he's so good? He's gone before us. He knows the way. He knows the terrain. Come on, this is my father's world. Amen. And, I, and I've already said, I'm going to live till I die. This is my father's world. When I go through, amen, um, the, 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 the nation and I see the trees and the forests and the oceans and the lakes and rivers, I say, my father did that. When I look at the birds and I see all the colors and I see all the flowers, I say, my father did that. And he leads me because I want to tell you the good shepherd wants to lead you. And sometimes we think we know best. We don't want to hear nobody. We don't want to listen to nobody. We think all we got to do is Google it. I'm going to tell you something. The good shepherd has, has knows more in his little finger than Google could ever know. And whip, what is it, Wikipedia? You know what that is? That's only you and me sending in stuff. That ain't nobody else. That's just normal folks sending in stuff. And they put it all and they call it, make you think it's an encyclopedia. The good shepherd wants to guide us. The hireling wants to abandon and mismanage us. The psalmist says he leads me. Mm. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his namesake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. Why? For the good shepherd's with me. And your rod and the staff, you, they comfort me. I want to tell somebody, no matter what season we go through in life, God is present throughout every season of our lives, even those difficult seasons. Anybody had some difficult seasons in your life? Amen. When, when it, it's, it's as if you're asking, what's next? It's like, when's the next shoe going to fall? There are, there are, we go through seasons sometimes, season, difficult seasons. I remember the, the, the psalm, the, the poem, Footprints in the Sand. The brother had a difficult seasons of life, and when he got to heaven, he looked back over the sands of his life and he began to look and he, at first he saw two sets of full footprints and, and he said, thank you for being with me. You were there with me. Thank you. Thank you. But then it came to a point he recognized, but wait a minute, that was the most difficult time in my life. That was the height of the difficulty of my life. Why? Did you abandon me? Why did you walk away? I only see one set of footprints. The poem says the Lord turns to him and says, Oh, son, oh, daughter, 
I didn't abandon you. See, because I said I'd never leave you. I said I'd never, I did not abandon you. I knew that it was hard for you. I knew that that was the most difficult season of your life. And you were getting weak. He says it was in those times that I reached down and I picked you up and I bore you in my arms and I carried you. I walked for you because I knew you couldn't walk for yourself. I carried you. Why? Because I'm the good shepherd and the good shepherd protects, the good shepherd provides, the good shepherd guides. I'm going to tell somebody, he is a good guide. You may not always like it. You know how the GPS, it tells you there's, 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 there's an accident up ahead. There's traffic up ahead. Do you want me to lead you around it? I'm so glad that the Holy Spirit He goes before us, and he does not tell us danger. Remember, lost in space, Brother Niles, danger, Will Robinson, danger. He doesn't always do that. But sometimes he'll urge you, he'll prompt you to go another way. And later on, you find out there was a shooting down that block. Later on, you find out somebody got robbed down that block, but he guided me around it. I believe that when we get to glory and we'll have all the time in eternity, we're going to find out many dangers unseen. The Lord guided us around. He guided us through. See, because sometimes you're walking through a minefield. Sometimes you'll walk into a room and you don't know what's going on in that room. You'll walk into a situation, you don't know what just happened. You're walking through a minefield. But he'll guide you through it. He'll order your steps. Order my steps, oh God. Order my steps. Lead me and guide me. I want to tell somebody, I want to tell some young man, some young woman listening to me, looking on me. I want to tell you that the good shepherd, he wants to guide you. He wants to guide you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He wants to guide you through every season of your life. And he will not get weary nor tire of being with us. He doesn't need a break from us. Now, y'all just look up here. There are some people in your life. Look at me. Look at me. There are some people in your life, you know I'm telling the truth, that every now and then you say, I need a break from them. (laughs) I just need a break. You deserve a break today. But I want to tell somebody, there is somebody that needs a break from you. I know you think you all that, bag of chips. I know you think everybody should just find it a joy and a pleasure to be around you, but there are times when somebody's saying, oh, just give me an hour. Oh, just give me a day. Oh, give me a weekend. But what I want to tell you, that the good shepherd never needs a break from you. <laughs> I want to tell you, the good shepherd, he never gets tired of you. The good shepherd never gets tired of hearing your voice. My sheep, my sheep, I know my sheep's voice. You know, a mother, sometimes, sometimes she, she wants to know what her real name is. Because she can go through a day and she come thinking her name must be mommy. Mommy, 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 mommy. And then when an adult comes home, maybe, don't call her mommy. She needs to hear an adult voice. Am I talking to the wrong group? Y'all, y'all looking at me like y'all know what I'm talking about. It could be on the job. You get tired of even hearing your name on the job. Um, um, Mr. McDowell, Mr. McDowell, hello, Mr. McDowell, can I talk to you? Mr. McDowell, this, Mr. McDowell, that. I remember I used to get tired, so tired 
please, nobody call me, please. I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about on that secular job. It's a reality. If you're in the medical profession, sometimes you get tired of that buzzer being pushed. I pushed it. I just want to see if you would come. You, you understand what I'm saying? But I serve a God who's the good shepherd. And I can call him in the midnight hour. I can call him at noontime. It makes no difference what time of day. I can call him and he'll answer because he's the good shepherd. God, I need some help. I need some guidance. He said, acknowledge me and I will direct you. Songwriter says, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us. For our use thy fold prepare. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Thou hast brought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Thou hast brought us thine we are. The good shepherd wants to guide you. And then lastly... The good shepherd wants to give you life. Jesus says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's talking about the cattle rustler. He's talking about the hireling, the day worker, who wants to give you nothing but death, decay, and theft. Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Through the willing sacrifice of Jesus, he made salvation possible for all. Every ethnicity, for male and female, young and old, for all who would come to him in faith. But he made it very clear, he made it abundantly clear, salvation can only be found through him. Because not only is he the good shepherd, he says, I'm the gate. If you try to get in any other way, I can only conclude that you're a cattle rustler. <laughs> I can only conclude that you're a hireling. You got to come in through me. If you want to find salvation, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except he comes through me. I want to tell somebody that you are, highly, you are highly valued, that the good shepherd loves you. The good shepherd gave his life for you. The good shepherd is a forgiving shepherd. The good shepherd is a loving shepherd. The good shepherd is a gentle shepherd. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us. I want to tell you in this room that he came to give you life. He came to lay down his life to save you and to demonstrate his love for you. I'm going to ask that you stand to your feet. He wants to be your shepherd, and he is the good shepherd. He wants to protect you. He wants to provide for you. He wants to guide you and give you life. Some of you in this room, you may be the prodigal son. You may be the prodigal daughter. You walked away. You drifted away. Some of you in this room or online, you've never asked God to forgive you in a real way. You've never asked God to forgive you with repentance. But you turn from your sin, you turn from your life, and you turn to God. I want to invite you today to receive Jesus Christ as your good shepherd to receive Jesus Christ the one who gave his life for you there are some of you that you've never done that and some of you that you walked away you can come back home can I tell somebody you can come back home that, that, that you can come home you can, you can return back to the father's house no matter what you've done, no matter where you've gone, you can come back home. Maybe you're here and you say, I'm, I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure if I were to die tonight, I'm not sure where I would open my eyes at. And I want to be sure. God has given us his word that these are written that you might know that you have eternal life. He that has the Son has life. And he who has not the Son of God has not life. You can know for sure that you're saved. And so I'm going to ask that you bow your heads and close your eyes. And I'm going to extend to you an invitation. Here's the invitation. Jesus died on the cross. He died on the cross to save you. He died on the cross. He took your place. He took your penalty, my penalty, because he's the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. If you're in this room and you say, Pastor, I'm the prodigal daughter. I'm the prodigal son. But I want to come home. Because Jesus died to make a way for me to come. This is what I want you to do. There are papers that are here. I want you to come and take one of those papers and I want you to write your name on it. Write your name on it and write a contact number on it that says, and then just doing that, put it back on the cross. It's saying, I know that he died for me and I want to come home. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, but you want to do that today, you can do the same. Take a paper down. Write your name on it. Put a number on it so that we can reach out to you. It's saying, I'm coming back to Jesus. I'm giving my life to Jesus. I'm going to follow him. But if there's a prodigal in your family, maybe it's a son, maybe it's a daughter, I want you to take a paper down and I want you to write the name of that prodigal that you've been praying for. God, bring them home. Bring them to themselves. Help them to cry out to you wherever they are. If there's a prodigal in your life and it's not you, I want you to take a paper, write their name down. You don't need to put a phone number, but put that note down at the foot of the cross. Lord, will you save Johnny? Will you save Sally? You died to give them life. Will you bring them to themselves? I'm laying them at the foot of the cross because I know that you're able. I know that you're able to set them free. I know that you love them. Will you lead them back to you? If it's you, nail your name to the cross because he, he put you, he put, he died for you. But if it's for somebody else, lay it at the foot of the cross. We want to believe God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what we can ask or think. He's saying, come home. It may be a parent, it may be a husband, it may be a wife. Lord, I'm placing them at the foot of the cross because they need you. They're lost without you. Can you help my friend? Can, can you bring their searching to an end? There's going to be a roundup at the end of time. The Lord is going to send forth his angels. There's going to be a roundup and the Lord is going to appear in the sky. And I want to, when he appears, I want to appear with him. Anybody there? I want to be with him. Talk to him about him. God save him. God save her. God deliver her. Maybe you've drifted away and you, need, you know that you need to come back. You know you need, you need to be closer to God. You need to press in and write your name and put it on the cross. In the name of Jesus, the good shepherd, the good shepherd, 
the good shepherd. If you're online and you're a prodigal or a prodigal son or a prodigal daughter, put your name on the screen and say, I'm coming home. I'm coming back to Jesus. I'm giving my life to Jesus. I'm giving my life to the one who gave his life for me. Come on. Come on. Nobody is impossible to reach. No, don't give up on them. Don't give up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that we were on your mind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you died for them. Thank you that you called them. You are drawing them as you drew us. You are able to draw them. Save my son. Save my daughter. Save my father. Save my mother. Save that auntie, that uncle. Save my neighbor. Save my coworker. Have mercy, God. Save me. The Bible said if we cry out to him, he will not turn us away. We will confess with our mouth and believe in our heart the Lord Jesus, we will be saved. Father, it's in your name, the name of Jesus, that we come. You see every name that's represented before us. You know the details of their life. You know where they are at this very moment. Father, wherever they are, whatever they are doing, Holy Spirit, arrest them. Arrest them. Bring them to a halt. Bring them to themselves. In this moment, we cry out to you for them. Take away the taste. Take away the desire. Bring them to themselves. Even now, Holy Ghost, open their eyes. Speak to their heart. Let them call home. Let them call home with a broken heart. For a broken and contrite heart you will not despise. Bring the wanderer home, the drifter home. Bring their searching to an end. In the name of Jesus, we ask their God that you'd raise up workers, raise up laborers to call those that are lost to the Father, to the cross, to Jesus. This is my prayer. I pray, oh God, that you would seal this word in our hearts. When the enemy tries to make us believe that we're all alone, when the enemy tries to make us believe that you are no longer with us, when the enemy tries to cause us, dear God, to go down places and down roots, dear God, that are not for our good, we ask, oh God, that you remind us who we are and whose we are. Seal this word in our hearts that you are the good shepherd. Where you lead, we will follow. Guide us, direct us, provide and protect us. Be the good shepherd in our lives. We say yes to your will and we say yes to your way. In the powerful, precious name of Christ our Lord, and everybody said amen. 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 I hope you enjoyed that message. And I hope that you will like and subscribe to this channel. If you want to experience a live service, be with us at this same channel next week on Sunday at 1030 a.m. Until next time, God bless you.